Hello, everybody. Welcome again to Arkansas Alive, looking at the unseen through the eye of faith. Today on Arkansas Alive, I'm going to show you from the Word how you can look and see the unseen through the eye of faith. In other words, if you're believing God for something, you're standing for something, could be healing, deliverance, family, lost loved ones being saved, finances. If you're looking and standing for something and you have God's word on it, God's promise on it, you've sown your seed, you've believed Him, you're looking at the unseen until it becomes the seen. You don't need your faith after you can see it. But it's only when you can't see it that you have to look at the unseen. And the only way you can do that is through the eye of faith. That's what we're going to talk about today and all week this week. Be sure and join me every day. First, let's pray for all those in authority. According to Timothy, this is something that we are commanded to do. So let's do it and let's do it together. Father, we come to you today. We pray for all those in authority, beginning with our president, our vice president, our governor, our mayors, our city officials, senators, representatives, law enforcement, pastors and ministers of the gospel, spiritual authority. We pray a hedge of protection around about these people. Say no weapon formed against them will prosper. No, no uh, uh, weapon formed against them uh, will succeed. And no evil shall befall them. No plague come near them. We thank you, Father, that they have wisdom and knowledge and anointing and ability. And we stand in the gap as believers and we bind principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. We bind demon spirits from confusing, confounding, so that the Spirit of God and the truth can go forth and we can live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, join me in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. That's where we left off yesterday. And we're going to hopefully conclude this passage of Scripture. And I left off reading in uh, verse 17, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Now, I stopped right there yesterday and gave you uh, an understanding and, and a challenge, a charge. Don't take this out of its setting and use it to support your extreme, erroneous God sovereignty philosophy or doctrine. Uh, that's what people do when they, oh, well, everything that happens to us is the will of God. And, and God's allowing or creating all this to happen to me so that, uh, you know, He'll work out some mysterious purpose in my life. Not true, not biblical. Listen to the whole passage of Scripture. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory while we look not at the things which are seen. Did you get it? You got to read it all together. The light affliction, which is just for a moment, not a lifetime, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. We don't, we don't look at, it doesn't mean you don't see them. It means you don't focus on them. You don't concentrate on them. You don't make them the, the foundations of your life, or your Christian life, your believing life, your family, your money, your health. You don't, let me just show you the, the example of this. Now, Jeannie has given this testimony a lot of times. She even has a, a product spot illustrating this when she promotes her book, uh, Learning How to Trust God's Faithfulness, how... She was in, her back was broken in three places in an automobile accident 25 years ago, I guess now. And, well, actually longer than that, 27, 28 years ago now. And the doctor showed uh, me the x-ray of her back and showed me the breaks in her, in her vertebrae, in her spinal column. 
She was not paralyzed, but they told her not to move her head off the pillow or it could sever her spinal cord or she would be paralyzed or uh, whatever. And they wanted to do surgery and put three rods in her back the size of this, this pen, and she said no. Now, they thought she was in shock, but she wasn't in shock. She was responding to the, the Spirit of God on the inside of her. He always knows best. See, it, this is where a lot of us miss it. It's not whether you have the surgery or don't have the surgery. It's not whether you take the medicine or don't take the medicine. It's not whether you borrow the money or don't borrow the money. That is not the issue. The issue is when you're faced with those things, what does the Spirit of God tell you to do? That's the key. Because the Holy Spirit knows the future. He's the Spirit of truth. And He will tell you what to do. That's the key, is what does God say? And there you go back to whether people can hear and know God or not. Because very few Christians know how to hear God. And they don't know, you know, what to believe and what not to believe. So they, they just are led by their physical senses. So Jeannie had the evidence of what was seen. I mean, we could see it. It's visible. It's right there on that x-ray. Here's what the truth, here's what the, here's what the facts are. Remember, this is a truth. But this is the truth. And the truth will change a truth. So she, she declined the surgery, and so after a few days, they sent her home in an ambulance, and the Lord told her what to do. The Lord told her to lay flat on her back for 30 days and then get up, and that's what she did. And her back was completely whole and healed. Her eyelids on either side of her spinal column, you don't know this unless you've been there, it was perfectly lined up. In fact, when she went back to the doctor uh, to check up, he thought she had had the surgery. He said, your back is perfectly lined up, and they did a good job on the surgery. She said, I didn't have the surgery. So what she was doing was she was not focusing on what she could see. She was focusing on the unseen. She was not looking at the scene, in other words, she was not focusing on believing the scene. She was focusing, believing on the unseen, which was the promise of God that by Jesus' stripes, you were healed. Now, see, you've got to build this on the inside of you. You've got to build this in you to the point where it is irrefutable. You're not moved by what you see. You're only moved by what you believe. And this takes practice, it takes time. But if you're facing a situation today, it could be physical, mental, it could be family, children, a job, it could be finances, it could be any number of things. But if you're believing God for something and you're being harassed by the physical circumstances, what you see, it could be lack. You could be being hounded by bill collectors saying, if you don't pay this, we're going to, you know, impound your car. We're going to turn you over to a um, collection agency. Or, uh, But if you have sown your seed, now a lot of the times our financial problems are self-made. <laughs> We've done it ourselves. We've done something stupid. Uh, we got in, in greed. Uh, we um, were foolish. We, you know, but if, if, it's, if it's that, all you have to do is repent and ask God to forgive you and help you get out of it. But if you've done everything right according to the Scriptures and you're believing God and you've sown your seed, that's very important when finances are concerned. You have to have seed in the ground. Otherwise, there's nothing for God to multiply. There's nothing, there's no harvest owed you because, you know, you didn't, plant any seed. No seed, no harvest. So if you have planted your seed, you've given something, you've planted a seed for your crop, then you have to look at the unseen, not at the seen. Look at the unseen. 
You say, Pastor Cole, well, what's the unseen? The unseen is, is that God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. That's the unseen. You haven't seen your money yet, but you can see God's promise. That's faith. This is seeing the unseen through the eye of faith. I remember early in the ministry when Jeannie and I resigned our jobs, went full-time in the ministry, and, and the first year in the ministry, oh, my Lord, we didn't, we didn't have enough income from offerings and whatever to pay attention. It's a, it's a miracle how we live for that first year. We don't even really understand how we made it. And uh, at the end of that first year, of course, we filed our income tax return. This was 73, I think, 72. Yeah, 73, and we were filing our 72 income tax return. <laughs> and they said, I owed such and such, because we'd both been working that previous year, and then we went into the ministry. And so we had no salary income coming to us uh, in those early years, but, but we were paying income tax on the year that we did have salaries. And our income tax was greater than what we could pay. We had no money to pay the income tax. I was embarrassed. I was under pressure. I had never faced anything like that in my life. My family had never. I mean, I was brought up, you pay what you owe. You don't spend what you don't have. You don't live above your means. I mean, and, and I'd always done that, and I always paid all my bills and everything. But, man, this was pressure and embarrassing. I did not know what to do. So I wrote the IRS a letter. And I said, dear sirs, <laughs> and I was, so, I was so ignorant and so innocent. I wrote them and told them, I said, um, I, I realize that I owe this income tax, and yet we uh, have left our jobs and are traveling full time in the ministry, and uh, uh, I will pay you. I just don't know when or how, so if it's okay with you, I'd like to just pay you $20 a month until it's all paid for. <laughs> I look back on that now. I, 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 that was my heart. I was honest and I was trying to do the right thing. And I was overwhelmed by the pressure because, you know, you always hear the, you know, infernal revenue is going to come get you and throw you in the poorhouse and uh, repossess all your property. And, buy, and they have done that. Uh, but yet, I, I was just thinking, okay, they'll have mercy on me. And I tell you, I got back the nicest letter from somebody at the IRS. Now, I remember this was in 1973, I think, uh, or four. And uh, they said, uh, dear Mr. Caldwell, we appreciate so much you communicating with us. But the IRS <laughs> does not have a $20 a month payment plan. However, we will allow you to pay this back on a quarterly installment. And they told me what to do and how to do it. And I, I was so relieved. I mean, the pressure was off and I, I was able to pay that every quarter. Or how, I don't even remember what it was. It's been so long ago. But the point I'm making is I had a promise from God. Yet I was looking at what I could see. And what I could see was debt. <laughs> jail time, repossessions, you know, that's what I was seeing and thinking with my carnal mind. But in my spirit, I knew the Word of God was true. I knew it, was, it would work for me, but I just needed a little time. So I began to sow seed. I began to believe God. I began to confess. And I want you to know we paid that income tax for that year exactly like they asked us to pay. It wasn't a whole lot back then. <laughs> And yet I was able to pay it and, and always able to pay our bills ever since. Once you pass a money test, you won't have to take that test again. If you're honest, if you, if you are not greedy or covetousness or, you know, make the same mistake over and over again, if you get out of your situation, you pass that money test, you, you'll be able to go on to the next thing. So... I was looking at, at what I saw instead of the unseen. And I had to make a determination. And you, you do too. For we look not, 
don't focus on the things which are seen. Now, faith has gotten a bad rap. Uh, our criticizers have said that people of faith just deny that the problem exists. That's not what this says, and that's not what I'm saying. I've never done that. I've never, I've never denied the sickness exists. I've never denied the financial demand exists. I've never denied the problem. That's not what faith does. Faith does not deny the problem exists. Faith comes against the problem, against the challenge, and denies its right to exist in you, in your life, because of the promise that God made you. Remember Jesus said, in the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So faith looks at what is not seen. Faith looks at the, faith looks at the unseen, but your natural surroundings, you can't help but look at what you see. You can look at the bruises. You can look at the, at the, the sores, the cancers. You can look at the broken bones. Uh, you can look at whatever is happening to you. You can see the x-ray. You, you can feel the pain. You say, well, I know I'm, I'm, I'm more concentrating on the pain. Well, I know it because it's real and it's there. You're not denying it exists. It's not, it's not, the, it's not an error of your mind. It, this, is, this is real. It's, it's hurting. It's lack. It's poverty. It's, you know, trying to just steal, kill, and destroy. But you don't focus on that. You, and, and this is not the proverbial stick in the head in the sand like the ostrich. This is focus. You're not, you're not ignoring the problem. You are focusing on the answer. Did you get that? You're, you're not, it says here, you don't look at the things which are seen. In other words, you don't focus. It doesn't mean you can't see it. It means you don't focus on it. You don't uh, dwell on it. You don't fear it. You're not focusing on the things that you see, but you're focusing on the things that you don't see yet. Are you getting that? You're focusing on what you don't see yet. Let me, let me show you this in uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, and let's look at verse, um, Hebrews chapter 11. I'll tell you, my Bible, the pages are so old and so worn, they stick together sometimes. Hebrews 11 uh, and verse 7, by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with reverence, honoring God, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Now, here's Noah, real guy lived on this earth and God showed him that he was going to build an ark the earth would be flooded and he and his household would be saved so Noah he'd never seen rain he didn't know what rain was he didn't know what a flood was but he believed God and by faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as Yet, moved with reverence, he began to prepare an ark to the saving of his house. So here is an example of Noah, a man just like you and I are, and he had to not look at what he saw, but he had to look at the unseen. He had to look, pay attention to, focus on what he had not seen yet. Now let me tell you something. Let me help some of you. Your healing belongs to you. You haven't seen it yet, but it's there. Your financial deliverance, you haven't seen the money yet, but it's there. Your deliverance, you may not have experienced it yet, 
but it's there. Everything you need from God, everything you desire is there in Christ, in God, in Him. What you have to do is look at the unseen, what you don't see yet, through the eye of faith and take it by faith and say, Lord, I see it in your word, even though I don't see it in the natural yet. I see your promise in the word. You promised that by the stripes of Jesus I was healed. You promised that if I sowed my seed, I'd reap a harvest. I receive your promise, your word, and I take it by faith. It's mine now. I appropriate it now in the name of Jesus Christ. And you will have it. It's there. Your healing's there. This, let me give you another example. Now, you know, you're always bombarded on television by medicines and stuff. And, um, you know, you, and you might need some of that someday. And so you uh, are prepared to, or you have to, or you go to the doctor and the doctor prescribes some kind of uh, medicine for you to get over a situation or to heal something or whatever. Actually, it helps your body heal itself. And, and so you take the medicine and you don't, you don't get relief immediately, do you? No. It, 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 it might take two or three days, but then you begin to feel better. You're doing the same thing in the natural that I'm teaching you in the spiritual. You're taking a pill that you have no knowledge of what it does or why it works based on the doctor's recommendation, a prescription. You're taking that pill. It goes into your body. It begins to help your body overcome whatever the problem is, balance out something, whatever. And then in a few days, you begin to feel relief. You're doing exactly the same thing. What are you doing? You're looking at the unseen. You're taking the doctor's word for it. You're taking the, the, the pill manufacturer's word for it. You're reading, taking the bottle's word for it. And you're taking that for future result, but you don't see it yet, but you're going to in a few days. Well, you've, you've a natural confidence in that, but all you have to do is take that example and switch it over to the spiritual and get developed in using your spirit and the promise of God, and it'll accomplish the same thing. Take the finances. You can either go down to the bank and borrow the money. Of course, I, I think I understand. I read. I don't, I don't owe anybody anything, so I don't know what it is today to try and borrow uh, some money for something. But it, I understand it's getting harder and harder for people to borrow money to buy things uh, because the, of the credit tightening up or whatever. But if you go down and you borrow some money to, to purchase a house, a car, something big, whatever you need, uh, and you're going to pay it out by the month, you're doing the same thing in the natural as you would in the spiritual. You know, when I was growing up in, in, uh, as a kid, and my father and his generation and my generation, we didn't have credit cards. And, and my dad, what, what you did, you would save the money in advance prior to the purchase and then you would pay for what you needed or wanted. They had layaway plans. I think they've reinstituted that type payment. It's not a credit situation. In other words, you don't get the merchandise or the product and then pay it out. You pay on it before you get it. The layaway plan, if you're going to buy something for Christmas for your kids or your family or your spouse or whatever, you go down to the store and you take out a layaway plan where you get the article, they physically put it in a place in the store with your name on it, and you pay on that every month or every week until it's paid for, then they give it to you. That's what we used to do. That's the way it worked when I was a kid growing up. You had a layaway. And so you wanted to buy something. You paid for it before you got it. 
Well, if you're facing the finances today and in the natural, you can either charge it, put a credit card, uh, whatever, pay for it as you go, or you can sow the seed for it. You can plant the seed. If you're believing God for uh, you know, an automobile or something, ask the Holy Spirit what seed you should sow. I've had people sow, they sowed a car payment into somebody else's life. Uh, or they sowed an automobile into somebody else's life. The Lord told us to do that one time. We, <laughs> Jeannie and I had just gotten married. We had just gotten a car and we just got it paid for. It took us two or three years. We just got our car paid for, and the Lord told us to give it. And I thought, Lord, why? He said, you, this car's not going to last forever. You need another car. Yes. He said, then give, and it shall be given. He said, do you have the money to buy another car? This is when we first went in the ministry. I said, no, sir, I don't have the money to buy one. I don't even have the money to pay the payments. He said, then give the car and you will be given a car. Give and it shall be given. Now, I was just obeying God. I, that wasn't my, it wasn't my idea to do this. It was God showing us how his financial plan works. Well, how long did it take you to get a car? Oh, several months. Well, well how'd you get around? We had to borrow our son's car. We had to get rides. But eventually, God honored his word and blessed us with a car. A car was given to us that was worth two or three times the car that we gave. And the Lord's told us to do that many occasions with clothes, cars, airplanes, vans, you name it. There's a, there's a spiritual way and there's a natural way. So you don't look, focus on the things that you can see, but you look at the things which are not seen. Now we're going to finish this verse tomorrow. Uh, we hadn't even really got started yet, so be sure and join me for tomorrow's Arkansas Live. VTN's on Facebook, VTN, your Arkansas Christian Connection. You can also follow me on Twitter, happy underscore Caldwell. And you can watch this episode again, or if you missed it, log on to our website, vtntv.com. Click on Watch On Demand. And don't forget, through the miracle of live stream, thanks to our partners, VTN is available to watch 24-7 via live stream around the world. Click on vtntv.com and click on live stream. Remember Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and wherever you're watching too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas 72221 or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com.